Hey, have you ever noticed this colorful display in the background of our videos? Have you ever wondered what it is? Hi, I'm Masha here at the Bone Museum and this is our exhibit on phantom skulls. But what are phantom skulls? Let's dive in. Phantom skulls are real human skulls that are encased in resin, a form of plastic. More specifically, lucite because it has a clear finish with a 93% transparency and it is more resistant to UV rays and water. It is also less dense but more durable than other plastics. And while they look awesome, they do serve actual medical purposes. As for the origins of the phantom skulls, it all started in the 1960s. The 1960s is when plastic became wildly available to the general public and became significantly cheaper. If only they knew. And because phantoms are literally human heads encased in plastic, it was now possible to make them without it costing a ton. So why did we start putting heads and other body parts in plastic? Well, the answer is science. Who would have thought? Now, there are three types of phantoms, x-ray phantoms, dental phantoms, and radiotherapy phantoms, and they all serve a different purpose. And we're gonna start with x-ray phantoms. They were, and still are, very widely used in x-ray imaging. They're also the type of phantoms we have here at the museum. First of all, they're used for machine calibration. They provide a static object that could be placed into the x-ray machine, and by taking a photo of it, they can ensure that the machine is working properly. They're also used to teach imaging positionings to new x-ray techs. Because they're completely see-through, you can see every single bone inside, and if there's a specific bone or area of the bone that you need to take an image of, you would know exactly where to target the x-ray. These became really important in the advancements of radiographic imaging, such as CT and MRI machines. They were all tested on phantoms first before they moved on to humans, because luckily we do not test on humans anymore. Phantoms were even used in the advancement of new imaging technologies, such as the cone beam computed tomography, which helps create a detailed image of the face and is very often used in dentistry. They're even used in forensics. Phantoms are often used to simulate traumas, stage crime scenes, and also to do facial reconstructions. By having the skull suspended in this clear glass-like form, someone that is doing a facial reconstruction can use it as a reference for different elevations and facial structures, such as the brow ridge, the nose, the cheekbones, and the chin. This is my favorite phantom, it's so pretty. Extra phantoms are still made today, only they're made with synthetic bone now. And fun fact, phantom skulls used to be made by the company 3M, which as some of you may know, is the same company that now makes your post-it notes. Next up is dental phantoms, and you guessed it, they're used in dentistry. Dental phantoms or dental mannequins were used by dental students to perform various types of procedures. Filling cavities, root canals, extractions, anything you can think of that goes on inside your mouth, that's what they were used for. Now see, this is nice. This is not nice. They were real human skulls that would usually have plaster, silicone, or other materials placed on them in order to simulate the structures of the mouth. And they would even sometimes have a face placed on them to make them look even more realistic, as if they weren't already terrifying enough. Here at the Bone Museum, we don't like tensile phantoms, they give us nightmares. And just like the x-ray phantoms, they are still made today, but with synthetic bone. The third type of phantom, last but not least, is the radiotherapy phantom. These phantoms were designed specifically for the study of radiation absorption. Radiation treatments are used for certain cancers in order to shrink the tumor for easier resection or hopeful remission. These phantoms most closely resemble the density of human tissue and have multiple purposes in radiotherapy practices. One of their uses is typically before treatment, a CT or MRI will be performed in order to identify the targeted area of treatment. A phantom is sometimes scanned first in order to ensure that the machine is calibrated properly. Because, you know, you don't want them microwaving when they're not supposed to. And they were also used for study of the absorption of radiation. These phantoms would be sliced typically in inch thick slices, you know, just how you like your deli meat, and the scimitars would be placed inside. If you've ever watched Chernobyl, you know that a decimeter is a device that measures radiation. Except these ones were tiny. When radiation is administered, these decimeters would measure the amount 
and then the administering physician would be able to calculate if that is the desired amount of radiation for the treatment and would be able to adjust the dose based on that because you don't want them microwaving it too much or too little. So all in all, while this may look like a colorful decoration and it does make for an amazing display, phantoms have been instrumental in the advancements of science and medicine overall. And while I did refer to these as phantom skulls throughout the video, there are several other body parts that have been made into phantoms, including phantom torso, phantom pelvis, and this phantom leg. We do have a previous video that we also made on phantoms, so if you enjoyed this one, I would check out this one as well. And this is an LED display, so we do control the lights on the inside. If there's a certain color combination that you would like to see personally, let us know down in the comments. Here at the Bone Museum, our number one goal is to make osteology more accessible to the everyday person. And these phantom skulls are a huge part of medical history, which is what we are all about here at the museum. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe, and also check out our other socials for more amazing bone content. And if you would like to check out this exhibit for yourself, make sure to visit us at the Bone Museum in Brooklyn, New York.